Welcome to a new episode of Let's Code a Linux Network Driver. In today's video I will show you how we can receive frames in our simple SPI Ethernet device in the set device. Before we start implementing some code, let's take a look how the reception of frames is working with the set device. And therefore I have prepared a small set of slides to explain the reception of frames on the set device to you. So what do we see here? On the left hand side we have the driver which is running on our Raspberry Pi and on the right hand side we have our simple SPI Ethernet device. The Raspberry Pi and the set device are connected over the SPI bus and there is one GPI open on the Raspberry Pi configured as an interrupt by the driver and the set device can pull this interrupt pin low to indicate to the Raspberry Pi uh, interrupt is currently active. And in case the set device has received a frame, what it does is it will assert the interrupt to tell the driver, okay, there is something ongoing which needs your attention. And the driver will now have to find out the cause for the interrupt. And to find out the cause of the interrupt, it reads out the interrupt status of the set device. The way the um, driver can read out the interrupt status is it can assert the SPI command 8, which is get interrupt command, and then the set device will send one byte back to the Raspberry Pi, which contains the interrupt status. And in case a frame was received, bit number 2, so this 4 hexadecimal here, will be set. In case bit number 4 is set, a frame was transmitted successfully. But if bit number 2 is set, the driver knows, okay, the set device has received a frame. And after this command, the set device will deassert the interrupt pin again. So the interrupt is no longer um, present on the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so our driver now knows there was a frame received and now the driver needs to read out the frame which was received. And in order to do so, what the driver will do is, is will send out or it will write out the SPI command 7, which is the receive frame command. And the set device will send out the length of the received frame with two bytes and then length data bytes, which contain the data of the frame. And this is all transferred by SPI. After read out one received frame successfully, the driver will call the function net interface receive skb. So a frame in Linux is represented in a scatter buffer, the skb buffer, and this function net interface receive skb will process the received frame. And after receiving one frame successfully, the driver um, yeah, issues the receive frame command again, but in case the set device has no frame, no received frame, it will only send two zero bytes to indicate, okay, the length of the currently active frame is zero, so zero means there is no current received frame. But in case here the, um, the set device sends a length again, then not only one frame was re um, received, there are multiple frames and the driver can read out the frames by issuing this command here, the receive command, and at the end when all frames are read out successfully, what the set device will do is it will respond with zeros to the 0x7 zero to the receive get received frame command. Okay, and that's how um, frames are received on the set device and which interaction is needed in the driver. So I would say now let's try to implement the driver. So here I'm connected on my Raspberry Pi over SSH and I'm already in the folder of my set device. So let me open up the set.c driver. So basically what we have to do is in our interrupt handler we have to check, we have to read out our the source of our current interrupt and in case bit number 2 is set, so for we have to call a function which takes care of reading the received frames out of the set device. 
And this function I will call set receive frames. And as an argument, I will pass the private data of my um, set device here as an argument. Okay, so the next step is to implement this um, function. So the return value will be void, so there will be no return value, and the only argument is from the type struct set net pointer, so a pointer to our private data. Then I will declare some variables. So I will need a data buffer of two bytes. I will need a eight or a one byte command, which I will send to receive frame. And of course I have to add a define which resolves this receive frame command. So here at the start, here I have all the available commands and here will, I will add a new one for receiving a frame. And I will call this command receive frame. Okay, then I will need a, a two byte long variable for the length of our currently received frame. I will need a status variable and I need a variable from the type struct scatter buffer pointer rx scatter buffer. So this here is the scatter buffer for my currently received frame. And then I will start a do while loop because I have to read out not just one frame, no, I have to read out all the received frames which are buffered in the set device. So as long as this len is bigger than zero, I will continue to read out frames. Good then I will have to access the SPI bus from my driver. Therefore, I will lock the mutex for accessing the SPI bus. And at the end, of course, I have to unlock this mutex here. Okay. And now I can access the SPI bus. So what I have to do is, first I have to write out the command receive frame, which is seven. And then the set device will send me two bytes, which contains the length of the current frame. And then last but not least, I have to read out the data. So I will use the command set write read to write out my um, command receive frames, which is one byte in size. And then I will read back two bytes of data and I will return, I will save the return value in the status variable. In case status is zero, this command here worked just fine. If it's a negative error code, an error occurred during the SBI operation. Okay, and then I will calculate my frame length. Therefore, I will use the first byte from the set device shifted by eight and or it with the second data byte. And in case length is bigger than zero and um, status is zero, in this case we have a frame, we have received a frame which we have to process. Okay, and now I'm doing something which is not perfect. We will discuss it later why it isn't perfect and maybe you know a way how to do this better. So I will start a second do while loop and this in this do while loop I will reserve or I will allocate memory for my received frame with the function def alloc skb. And as an argument here I have to pass the length of the received frame. And in, ca in case the allocation didn't work because we are out of memory, this rx skb pointer will be set to null. And in this case, I will print out an error message. Could not allocate memory for um, or XSKB. And I will try to allocate the memory again. And I will do this as long as um, RXSKB is a null pointer. So this loop here, this do while loop um, will 
continue until I have successfully allocated memory for my Rx buffer. And after allocating memory, what I can do is I can read out the frame with the SPI read function. And then I will use the function um, skb put. So what this function is doing is it sets up the um, yeah, data pointer correctly inside this scatter buffer. And this function also returns the a pointer to the first byte of data to which we can copy our data. So yeah. And here I will read out length bytes over the SBI bus to read out the frame. And then I can unlock the mutex finally. So what I do not like about the code is I'm doing a memory allocation in a critical section while I have locked the mutex for accessing the SBI bus. The reason why I'm doing this is because I don't know the length of the frame before I access the SPI bus and when I send out the 7 command and, the, and I receive the length then the set device expects the driver to read out the data and it can only read out the data if it has a valid um, data buffer in which it can place the data and I don't want any other SPI commands to interfere here so it makes sense to lock the mutex but it's not very or it's not beautiful or it's not the best way that I have a memory allocation here in this critical section. But yeah, okay, that's the way I've implemented it. If you know a better way, please let me know in the comments down below. Okay, and now we have received a frame. Now we will add some more information and pass it to the upper layers. So once again, I will check if the length is bigger than zero and um, the status is equal to zero. And if so, I forgot this brace here. If so, I will set some more fields in my scatter buffer. So I will set the device pointer of my scatter buffer to the pointer to my current network device. And there is also a field for a protocol and the protocol I will get with the function ethernet type trans and as an argument here I have to pass in a pointer to my scatter buffer and a pointer to my networking device. And this will return the protocol and I will save it in the scatter buffer. And after doing this I can call the function net interface receive skb and this will process the received frame and pass it to the next upper layer in the Linux network infrastructure. And at the end, let's print out an info that we have received a frame. Um, so this will be an info received frame with d bytes. And let's print out the size of the frame in bytes here. Okay. Then here I can close this. And that should be it. So that's how to receive a frame. Let's see if this program is actually working. So I will close it. I will try to compile it. And let's see how much mistakes I've made. Uh, okay, yep, this should not be... Okay, so this is already a pointer. Let's try again. Okay, this is looking good. So now I will add the device tree overlay for my device. And I will open up Tmux to follow the kernel slug in this window and in this window I will insert the driver. Okay, the driver is now active and loaded and what I will do now is here I have my set device and this is connected to an Ethernet of my local PC. So let me plug this cable in and then we should see that we are actually receiving some frames here which is cool. Okay, 
And here I have my set network interface. So let's set up an IP address here. With sudo IP address add, I will give it this IP address. Okay. And my local PC here, let me show you this, has this IP address. So now we should be able to ping the devices. So let's try it. Is the IP address still here? Yep, I don't know why, but somehow the uh, sometimes the IP address disappears. But now let's try to ping our device. Hey, and the ping is working. We can send data and communicate with the other device. We can also check if the ping is working from my PC to the device. And yes, it is, cool. So maybe let's try some more advanced stuff here. I will start a server with netcat. Yep, now I lost the IP address again. So let's add it again. And now let's start a server with netcat. So I want to listen at port 12345. And here on my local machine, I will also use netcat to connect to the device with this IP address and this port. Hello, set, and you can see it's working. Yep, it's working. Cool. So yeah, that's how to implement the receive function for our driver for the simple SBI Ethernet device, the set device. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee on buymycoffee.com slash for Linux. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.